We welcome you to worship this morning as we gather together both in person here and online. And so we welcome everyone who is gathering here. We also welcome God who I believe is present with us in our worship. Light dawns in a weary world when eyes begin to see all people's dignity. Light dawns on a weary world. The promised day of justice comes. Love grows in a weary world when hungry hearts find bread and children's dreams are fed. Love grows in a weary world. The promised feast of plenty comes. Hope blooms in a weary world when creatures once forlorn find wilderness reborn. Hope blooms in a weary world. The promised green of Eden comes. The trees shall clap their hands. The dry lands gush with springs. The hills and mountains shall break forth with singing. We shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. As, as all, all the world, world in wonder echoes shalom. That's from verses 1 to 3 and the chorus of light dawns in a weary world. And I want to call your attention to that idea of how the eyes begin to see. Because we'll be talking about seeing and not seeing today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal, Eternal wisdom, wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue now with the reading of the word. A reading from the book of Psalms. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongues with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourse of the Negev. Those who sowed the tears will reap with songs of joy, and those go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. A reading from Hebrews. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number. Because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day first for his own sins, and then for those of the people. For he did once and for all off when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able. Together we will receive the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. They, Jesus and the disciples, came to Jericho. 
As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Children, let's invite you to come forward. Good morning. Thank you for coming up. Well, how are you this morning? You're pretty good. I want you to turn around and see what are those things sticking out of that vase? They're flowers, yeah. Flowers need water, and they need to be in a vase. Now, we look at that. What colors do we see? Red, yellow, pink. Yeah. And purple. Those are pretty neat, aren't they? Aren't you glad you can see them? Yeah. The gift of sight is a precious gift, isn't it? Today... We heard about a man who was blind. And Jesus came and Jesus healed him. Now, not everyone who is blind was healed. One of those was a woman, a young girl by the name of Fanny Crosby. When Fanny was six years old, how old are you guys? Seven, eight, six years old? Okay, Matthew, come here. He's three years old. He's three. Okay. And so, just imagine that Fanny got sick when she was six years old. And it affected her eyes. And she couldn't see clearly anymore. How do you think that would make you feel? You'd be scared? I would be scared. And sad? Okay. But Fanny did not let that keep her spirit down. During her lifetime, she used other gifts. And she wrote eight, something like 8,000 poems. That's a lot. And some of them were set to music. In fact, in this book, we have two of her writings in the book. One of them is called Blessed Assurance. Have you ever heard of that one? Let's ask them. Have you ever heard of Blessed Assurance? Yeah. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. You see, she still believed in Jesus throughout her life. Now, sometimes Jesus answers our prayers with a physical healing. But sometimes our prayers are answered by a deeper faith and a joy in God. So let's pray. Let's pray. 
Dear Jesus, be with us. Fill us with faith. And know that you are with us. All the time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Here. Here, Matthew. You want one? <laughs> Here you go. Can you share? Share that with the others. Okay. Thank you for coming up. of a frazzled mom at the end of a long day. And, and she has, you're laughing. <laughs> and she has someone come to her, her child. Mom, mom, mom! What do you want now? <laughs> Again, asking, crying, wanting something. What do you want? We're going to see some kind of a question. In fact, we're going to look at it a couple of different ways. What do you want? Well, there is so much that we could look at in this gospel lesson. It's filled with interesting comparisons and contrasts. And so we look at this right away, and we see that the main character in this is a blind beggar. Now we contrast that to immediately before this, there is the lesson that we had where the disciples were arguing about themselves, about who is the greatest among them and who was going to sit at the right and the left hand of Jesus when he came into all sorts of power and glory. And that was coming soon because they were going to Jerusalem and they were excited about that. And here is this blind beggar who would be considered the least of these. This man who once could see and now blind was reduced to begging. Probably his relationships with people were not very good. And because of what they believed that his relationship with God was not also very good because they believed that somebody who had suffered a severe illness like this must have sinned what a contrast and so we have another contrast with this man because this is almost at the end of their journey Jericho is at the bottom of this long hill about which on the top is Jerusalem Yes, it's a dangerous road, but they are near Jerusalem. At the beginning of this journey, way back in Galilee, Jesus healed another man who received his sight. There are some differences with this. In that one, it was the crowd that brought the man to Jesus. In this one, some of the crowd is saying, be quiet, you're bothering him and you're bothering us. We got to be on our way. A contrast, a contrast in how Jesus healed there. Jesus used mud and saliva and put that on the man's eyes. Here, Jesus just spoke. So we see there's contrasts that are taking place. But maybe the biggest contrast comes with another one. Another illustration that Jesus taught just before. Because there was a rich man, unnamed, who came to Jesus and wanted to know, how do I inherit eternal life? He probably had inherited a lot already. How do I inherit eternal life? What do I got to do? 
Jesus says, remember, what does it say in the law? You've done all those, I've done all those things. Great. There's one more thing you need to do. Go and sell all you have. You see that? Maybe Jesus saw that that was an idol for him. And so the man went away with great sadness. In contrast, we see this blind beggar. Yo, he does not have much, but he has one thing of great value, a cloak that would keep him warm, that maybe during the day he could put at his feet and people would drop coins there. That was his great possession. And what does it say that he did with that? Threw it off. off. Because he knew how valuable it was to be in the presence of Jesus. To see Jesus face to face. To know. Because he had had a request. And so now standing before Jesus, this beggar, is asked a question by Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Not just for anyone, but for you specifically. And the man replies, Teacher, give me my sight. Because he knows what a gift that would be. It's not just that he could see colors and shapes and people and people's faces, but he would be restored to relationship. He would be able to be with his family. He would be able to to worship again. So many things would be restored. The healing would have been great. And Jesus saw this man. And he said, go. Your faith has made you well. Now we know that people of faith have remained blind. I shared that with Fanny Crosby. And she became, continued to be faithful. She grew in her faith and in her witness. So many, many who are blind can see deeply in a different way. And many who can physically see are blind to some of the spiritual truths of God. This man was beginning to understand much more about Jesus. And he followed him on the way. So we have that journey. So what does that mean for us now? Imagine. Imagine that we're standing in the presence of Jesus. Jesus is right before us. And we kneel down. And we are there. And Jesus asks you a question. What do you want me to do? Let's change it a little bit. Not just for you, but what do you want me to do in order that you may see my presence? Well, how can we see God's presence? How do we see the presence of God in our churches? Listen. Could we see the presence of God in a church confident of the skills and resources that it has for ministry? Could we see the presence of God in a church working collaboratively with other churches in our conference? Could we see the presence of God in a church where we are looking for the ways that God is in mission in our world so that we can be a part of that mission? Could we see God's love doing that? Sharing hope? 
There are so many examples of things that need to take place that are there where people are hurting and struggling. Yes, there are some of those within our congregation, but there are many in our community and in the world around us. Let me give you one example that we became aware of here at the church this last week. We had two women, Jessica and Deanne, come to share the story of what they have a real passion for in our community. And it's called the Hagar House. That's from the Old Testament, from Abraham and Hagar, that situation that took place there, where Hagar found herself alone and abandoned with a son. And so this is a place that is intentionally being set up to help single mothers with their children. That they can have a place to get their feet back on the, under them. That they can have a place where they can deal with the trauma of whatever it was that caused them to be in this situation without a father present in that home. And so they're establishing this house. They have a site. They are working to develop that. Now, is that need a great need? Yes, it is for the mothers who are there, but just as much for their children. Because the statistics that were shared demonstrate how difficult and hard it is for a single parent mother to be able to raise children. The percentage of those who don't finish high school is great. The percentage of those who, young girls who end up in human trafficking is great. The people who, the children who end up with drug and alcohol abuse. And there is another percentage that contemplates suicide. And statistics have it that Marathon County is one of the highest counties in our state with single mother families. Is there a need? Can we as a church gather together? It happens that that presentation was given to our conference leaders, the pastors who had gathered together. And so there is a great desire and interest in how can we as individual churches and together help. Is there a need? That's one among many. Where is God leading us, guiding us to see the presence of God in our churches? But it's not only that. How do we see the presence of God in our lives and in the lives of our families. Again, listen. Could we see the presence of God in our lives as we experience the sacred holiness of rest and renewal? Could we see the presence of God in our lives as we are comforted with the peace of God as we struggle through illness and pain in our lives? God is real. And God is present in our lives. There are God moments that take place every day. God is near and God is at work, including with our families, including with ourselves. Sandy and I will be going this Monday through Wednesday afternoon to the theological conference in our synod. And one of the things that our synod staff knows very well is that pastors have been struggling and 
trying to deal with all of the pandemic issues for a long time. And it hasn't been easy for many of us. I give thanks for the support of this congregation for me in that journey, in that time. It hasn't been that way in every church. And so we look at that, that time of needed rest and renewal is for all people. All of us are tired and weary, but we can see hope. We can see God's love present in the lives of people around us. I believe that God is at mission. God has a mission in the world that is bigger than we can see. Yeah, there are so many things going on. But God has so many things going on too. And I believe that that mission includes our personal lives and it includes the life of the churches in our community, in our state, in our country, in our world. We are connected together. Now you might be asking, that's great. But where is God calling me? I, I don't sense that at all. How can I be a part of God's mission? Well, maybe you don't believe that God is calling you to do something. But I invite you to consider these two things. First of all, as followers of Jesus... We are to live our daily lives following Jesus. And the only Jesus some people may see is reflected through us. Think about that. If some of your friends and family and neighbors, some of your co-workers, some people that you happen to meet, if you are the only Jesus representative that they see. What would they see? And second, what if, as Jesus representative, we ask the question, what do you want from me, as a representative of Jesus, to do for you in order that you may see the presence of Jesus in your life. Wow. What if we ask that question? Let's pray. God, we come before you and I ask that you would help us to be bold in our witness, in our faith, in our journey in life. Help us to have the courage to ask the question, how can I show you the presence of Jesus? And Lord, help us to be aware of your presence in our own lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Will you join me in professing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gracious God, we come to praise you. Your love and your grace are beyond our understanding. Thank you for seeing us, for knowing us, 
for loving us. Thank you that you are a strong rock and a refuge. Bless and protect the missionaries and their families who were kidnapped in Haiti by a gang. Guide those seeking to obtain their rescue and help other countries to respond to the desperate needs of people in Haiti who are suffering from unemployment, food and fuel shortages, and a housing crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Stop the violence that is taking place in our state against police officers and other people, including family members. Guide us to establish an understanding of safe behavior in gun ownership and preventative measures for those who might plan violence against themselves or other people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect all students and teachers from gun violence. Prevent guns and other weapons from being brought to school. Help teachers, parents, and community leaders to teach ways to positively address conflicts and disagreements. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide and protect people around the world from the variants of the coronavirus. Provide medical staff with protective equipment and bless them with rest for their daily challenges. Bless the production and distribution of vaccines in parts of the world that continue to have less access to the vaccines. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let peace be present in tense places around the world, including in Afghanistan. Provide ways that U.S. citizens and those who helped the Allied cause can be resilient and can safely escape from those who would harm them. Guide the leaders of our country with wisdom and courage in all situations of conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let those who are problem solvers address the issues of white privilege and racial disparity in education, employment, housing, and health care. Help us to change our hearts to be a country with compassion for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide us that we can come to a deeper faith in you, Lord, as we share in our relationships with brothers and sisters around the world. Bless our companions in South Africa, including, including Bishop-elect N.E. Mogorosi, on his election as Bishop of the Western Diocese of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Southern Africa. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let your comforting presence be with those who are in nursing homes or assisted living centers, including Florence, Barb, Arliss, and Dorothy. Bless the staff in these facilities that they may act with compassion for the residents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who are troubled, facing surgery or ill, and bless them with your healing presence. We now lift to you Jeanette, Tom, Larry, Sebastian, Florence, Susan, Nancy, Jane, Harvey, Ed, Dave, all those listed on our prayer list and other people whom we name in our hearts, including close family and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort all experiencing the death of a family member or a close friend. Give us hope and confidence in the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pause and remember the offering that is here at the entrance to our worship space. And we remember the offerings that are shared throughout our week as we live and care and serve as Jesus' representatives. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. Let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us. Faithful and just God, we confess yes, that, that we, we are, are captive, captive to doubt, fear, and, and separation, separation from one another. We have, we have not, not loved our sisters and brothers as, as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Listen carefully. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent Jesus to pay the cost for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen. Amen. Now we prepare to gather at the Lord's table as we share in communion. At this table we celebrate the sacred act of the presence of God with us. As we gather, the leaves of the Lord's table extend to the pews here and to the chairs and tables who join us online. Listen to the words that we remember when Jesus began communion. Patiently wait for instructions on when to receive the bread and juice during the distribution of communion. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Do we, does anyone need the communion? And as a reminder for those online, if you would like to receive communion, you can stop by the church to pick those up. So we take the seal from the bread and carefully peel that back. The body of Christ given for you, take and eat. We peel back the seal on the juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Will you join me in praying together our Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be, be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will be done, be done on earth as, as it is, is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for the presence of Jesus with us. As you send us into the world, guard us from the power of evil. Keep us in unity with all your people and by your spirit. Move us to testify to your grace in our words and actions. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive now this blessing. 
May Jesus Christ, the word of life, bless you and send you to be his witnesses. Amen. How freeing it is to go deeper in faith and to experience the amazing grace that God pours out on us and our chains loosen and fall off. Our closing song is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Um, it's on page 94 of the Praise Songbook. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear! The Oh
Remember our purpose statement. Share God's love. I'm going to invite you to be seated for some announcements. I'm looking for people to help with the worship teams in leadership of our worship services. And this is um, something that we're looking at now and developing two or three teams of four to six people each with one person on that team as being the leader facilitator type of person. And this team would lead worship services at different times. So please contact me if you're interested in that. I had somebody talk to me about that this morning. And so please continue to think about that. And I will have a gathering early in November and we'll share some more ideas what that's all about. Next Sunday is Reformation Sunday. It is also the Sunday that we celebrate the affirmation of baptism of four of our youth. And I invite you to pray for those youth and their families. And if you simply pray for those affirming their faith, that God knows who that is. The following Sunday on November 7th, daylight saving time ends. So remember when you go to bed on the 6th, turn your clock back one hour. Otherwise, you'll be here early. But then worship on this su that Sunday will include a litany for all saints. It's also All Saints Sunday. And it will also include the distribution of Bibles to kids in grades second and third and those children aged three and four. So we have a different Bible for each of them. And so if, if you know of a child of that age who is, has been participating, uh, let them know and let us know as well. And as soon as possible after the worship service, we're going to join together for our congregational meeting. And so we'll be going into the fellowship hall and sharing and then sitting at tables that'll be spaced apart, but we can gather together for that congregational meeting. And there are elections of people and also then the discussion and approval of the 2022 budget. You may remember that Pastor Will Ostrom was ordained here at Mount Calvary. He's a member of the congregation currently, uh, but will be transferring his membership to one of the churches that he's serving. Because he's ordained he's got a, and he's got a call, um, he needed a whole set of stoles. He had all of those stoles except for one, and that is the purple one that is used during Lent. Now, we're not to Lent yet, but the council decided that we would provide Will with a purple stole. I've checked with him, and he had uh, requested one from a, an individual who has as her ministry making all sorts of stoles and other, th other things, pyramids, I believe. And so the stole that we got Will is actually hanging on the door of the closet there, and it, you'll, you will want to take a look at that. The council also added to that and gave to those groups that Will had designated during his um, ordination service as receiving the donations from that service. The National Alliance on Mental Illness and the Extraordinary Lutheran Ministry Group. So I encourage you to take a look at the stole that we're sharing with Will. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.
Yeah.